Moshi Moshi. Hello. I'm Zeb Ramsbotham. And I'm Annie Ramsbotham. And we're the Rambling Ramsbothams. Our journey might be rambling, but we hope this podcast isn't. Welcome to episode 101. Dalmatians. <laughs> Something like that, if you're into dogs. It's been like such nice weather all day, and then just now it started to rain, but it's 7.30 at night, so it's already dark in Japan for whatever reason, but it's kind of cozy, you know? Like we had such a nice outside day. Mm-hmm. And now we can just be cozy inside with the little rain patter. Yeah. It's the weather the past like two to three weeks, I guess really for almost a month now, has been really nice. But this is a quick aside, but I actually was writing like some notes the other day about things that like, one, it was a real far aside, but I just did it. <laughs> I need to, I need to stop saying like. Oh. I don't know if you listen to our episode 100. It's actually one of the first episodes I've gone back to listen to, and it made me super self-conscious. You had to edit out your likes? Well, no, I didn't didn't even edit them out because I published the episode, and then I was listening (laughs) to the published episode, and it made me realize how much I say that word. And I think I've mentioned on the podcast before, but someone once did tell me that I sound like the turtle from Finding Nemo. Really? I don't think you're quite as, like, bro-y. Yeah, I hope not. Well, I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being bro but I also have a vivid memory of my uncle, who's from California, so his daughters are Californians. Well, he's from the East Coast, but he lives in California. And I have a vivid memory of being a kid, and we were walking home from a park in Winston-Salem, and he told us that we needed to stop saying like, because we sounded similar to his kids out in California. <laughs> Why, why were you saying that so much in the park that you just really... I think just in conversation. Oh. I was using the word a lot. <laughs> and it was very um, not ideal. Well, we have something more exciting to talk about than your grammar or lack thereof. And we do, but that actually wasn't even my original oh, yeah, aside. What, what was your pre-aside? Um, <laughs> my original intent was I was thinking about how it. I miss long summer days oh because i'm pretty envious of people that are in i guess you know europe and north america because in some places the sun isn't setting until 8 30 maybe yeah. almost 9 p.m by june by mid-june it'll be 9 30 at night and the sun will set yeah but here the sun will still be setting around 7 7 15 yeah and it's because the sun comes up so early here yeah i was gonna say like here's your time as a construct thing but like yeah, the day's and- not any shorter it's just that we don't want to get up at 4 a.m but the sun gets up at 4 a.m <laughs> yeah we have the same amount of daytime but in japan because the time zone it's in the daytime is split more evenly between morning hours and evening hours and I, I really miss getting home and you know you have this long evening ahead of you yeah and it makes a big difference with bike riding and stuff because you can reliably do long outdoor activities after work and i don't know why but i don't like splitting my day so much when i have to do something in the morning and then go to work and then then i have my evening you know mm. i don't know you don't like getting your ride over with kind of you like to wait and do it in the evening sometimes i do but i like i don't like the jarring transition from exercise (laughs) and activity to work to Mm. then being home you know i like it except that i sweat a lot (laughs) and in the summer when i'm trying to do my exercise in the morning to like beat the heat it's still hot and so i'll go on a run or something and then I'll meet a friend for coffee. I did this several times until I decided, like, I can't run before I meet people yeah. anymore because I would be just, like, pouring sweat. And we'd be just, like, in a cafe. I would have already run, already showered, driven to the cafe. So, like, I don't know why my body was still, like, at an elevated yeah. temperature. <laughs> that happened to me at work a few times. Yeah. I would be sitting in the teacher's room with a puddle of sweat around me. <laughs> And it's because I did exercise that morning and then went to work. It's embarrassing. (laughs) Yeah, so I miss long summer days, but that's, yeah, beside the point. Other than that, the weather's been great. Yeah. It's been really nice. Well, to bring it back to uh, some fun, exciting news and exercise also, you have a bike race hill climb result to tell us about. Yeah, if you have been eagerly waiting to hear the result, <laughs> which I know many of our listeners have been Still wondering. Still on the edge of their seat. 
just constantly tuning in. Will he talk about it this episode? No, but it is a good it is a good update. Yeah, it's just um we can mention this is the first time we've sat in this room to record in two or three weeks. I know the last two episodes were pre recorded, so yeah. Now yeah, we've we're... had like a, a little, it's been a gap for us, but not for the listener because we pre-recorded. But yeah, it's now <laughs> two weeks. Now we're back weeks. in real time. Yeah. It's two weeks after the bike race, but I was third. Third overall yeah. out of everyone. Out of everybody. It's pretty big deal. It's, I the one of the web pages says something like it's Western Japan's biggest hill climb. Western Japan. Yeah, I can't remember. I mean, it's, um, I can't remember which one, but I remember Ibukiyama. reading it. Yeah. But yeah, it was a Bukiyama and it's a big hill climb event and I was third. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. Neat. You yeah. were so close to second you could see second in the finish line photo. Yeah, I finished nine seconds behind second. So close. Which kinda gave me a lot to think about in hindsight, which is a bit of a bummer. I'm happy overall with how it went. Yeah. And it was a really good day. But definitely thinking about, oh man, you know, I was so close to second first place was not catchable. But mm-hmm. second place, I was kind of in the fight for second place with like 250 meters to go. Mm. And then, yeah, it just didn't work out. I don't know if it makes you feel any better, but fourth place is like infinitely a worse feeling. Yeah, for sure. Then like, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But either way, if you had gotten fourth, that would have been really impressive still. But third is really something. Yeah, I'm super happy with third. Would and I was win? also. So I won a towel, so that's <laughs> very exciting, um, which was interesting because I, so I stayed in a hotel and then I rode a bike to the race and then did the race and then, of course, had to ride my bike home to get the car from the hotel. And thankfully, the towel came in a plastic bag that was the exact same size as my little souvenir that I got, my little paper certificate oh, certifying yeah. that I got third place. It's a big Japan thing. I've never won a certificate in America, Ever. you know, like for, like even when I won a national championship, I don't think they gave me a piece of paper. Well, you get a medal. You don't get a certificate. Yeah. You get a medal or maybe you get a little trophy, but in Japan, they give you a, an honorable paper certificate that's signed like by big the, deal. the president <laughs> of the Japan Bicyclist Club Federation. I mean, it is cool because now we have this thing on the wall that is frameable. Uh, yeah. You can't frame a medal. I don't know. Um, I think a medal is still cooler, but maybe that's just because I'm an American. I I want something like (laughs) to wear on my neck. (laughs) If you think about globally prizes, I can also makes me think about my buddy Alex that I was worked with in Winston Salem. He was kind of this like phenomenal cyclocross racer, and I remember one day I went over to his house and we were up in his room, and he opened his drawer. And it was just filled with medals. It was this like um, plastic tub just with national championship medals and all kinds of medals. Because he'd been racing since he was a junior. So he had all these national championships. He's a cool guy. He's so humble too. I just remember him like opening the drawer and he was like, yeah, these are my medals. Yeah. And I remember him like, (laughs) this is literally like more medals than anyone would normally ever have. And like good medals too, not just like... The Saturday Night yeah. Circuit. Like, imagine being so humble you just keep all your national championship medals in the kitchen drawer or something. Yeah, just in a drawer. But yeah, so I have a slip of paper. So I was able to put the piece of paper <laughs> in with the um, towel and then shove it underneath my jersey to ride home. And we'll hang it on the fridge, maybe. Maybe. And that was also my first sunburn of the year. Yeah. Because the weather that weekend, it was perfect. So normally, that race, it is in between kind of 10 kilometers and 15 kilometers, and this time it was the 15 kilometer version because there was no snow, snowstorm. So in previous, I think since 2019 or maybe even 2016 or something like that, it's been the 10K version because a snowstorm has blown through. So they had to shorten the course. So this wow. was the first time they did the long course in quite a while. It's impressive. Yeah. Third so that was place good. in the long course. When's your next one? May 19th. Because that's your A race. Yeah, Not so that you didn't train for this one, but this was like your very serious B race. Yeah, this was kind of like more of an experiment and like a fitness test and to kind of see how my pacing is doing and see how kind of my overall fitness is doing. And then I've kept training and preparing. And I have one more week of kind of like really big riding left because it's golden week now. So I have a couple holidays. So I have like one more week of big riding left and then I will taper down 
to my A race. Was the actual hill climb race part of it any different in Japan than it was in like American hill climb races? America, we don't do hill climb races. At all? Not really, no. We don't really, we don't really do this. Really? Really. I could have sworn there was one in like Boone or something where you race up to the top of like Grandfather Mountain or something. No. Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what am I thinking of? Well, I don't know. Just some other there was a There's a marathon that oh. they run to the top of Grandfather. Mm. Well, I thought it was interesting that you said that you race to the top and then you guys just all wait at the top until it's like yeah. safe to come down, which I feel like that wouldn't happen in America. No, everyone would probably wait at the top, of course, until the race is over, but then you could just go down. But here, yeah, they make us wait and then we go down behind a motorcycle, which is pretty inconvenient because the motorcycle is not as fast as the bike, which I know that, I guess that's the whole point yeah. to make you be careful. But yeah, hill climb is, it's really popular in the UK, but usually in the UK, because they're shorter hills, it'll be maybe like an 11 minute hill. Mm. So it's super high power only for nine to 11 minutes. But here in Japan, because they have big mountains, they're pretty long. Um, and we also do... in the UK, they're more like a time trial. So you do like a one-off. I was going to say, I've done a hill climb race before, but it's like... In mountain biking, we did uphill time trials sometimes. I did an uphill time trial in collegiate road stuff. Oh, we did that once. It was a time trial, and that mm -hmm. was in Brevard. Yeah. But that's like different from a hill climb, because oh. the hill climb in Japan, one is mass start. So everyone starts together. Oh. So it's like an uphill criterium, kind oh. of. Well, so you're all just like, yeah, I've never done a mass start hill climb. I've only done where you like, like a reverse downhill race where you get kind of like. Well, it's just a time I don't trial. Think we got seated. It just happened. It's like a mountain time trial. You just go uphill. Interesting. Is it not really chaotic at the start? Because you just mass start and everybody's just like in each other's way. No, because one, like the road's close. So you have the whole road. Mm -hmm. And then. I think just by the nature of it, because it's uphill, it's hard. So it just separates really quickly. And I guess if, if you have a power meter, you just are holding to the power you've decided on. Yeah. I mean, well, that's like, I guess the, like the hard question is like, well, do I pace myself based on what I know I can do? Or do I try and stick with people and see how far I make it? Because you're constantly wondering like, well, if I try and stick with people, well, you I might crack. Go too early. And then because you're going uphill, you can lose so much time, like so quickly if you blow up. Mm. So that's like the whole challenge, I guess, is do I pace myself or do I follow people? Um, well, it worked out for you. Yeah, but I did good. So I got third. And it was kind of fun because I'm there with like this local team and they kind of know of me because I think it's funny, but I have like a bunch of KOMs in Ishikawa now. Mm. So I think a lot of them know of me just from Strava. Well, you get, and, like, a notification on Strava if somebody takes your, like, fastest known time or yeah. whatever. So a lot of people know me, like, through that. So I think they know. And I've done that group ride race thing, their training ride with them before. So I think they, like, know relatively that I'm fit. But I think this was, like, a funny moment because I think a lot of people were like, oh, like, you ride bikes a lot. Oh. So it's kind of this, like, funny. They got beat. Well, not that they got beat because they're my teammates, <laughs> no, I'm just but I think that they were just kind of being aggressive. They were just like surprised that I got third. I think oh. they were kind of like, oh, <laughs> well, that's good. That probably felt good. Yeah, a little bit, but it was just some nice validation, I guess, that my training's been going well. Yeah. But it is nice too, because I have this last week to kind of really stay focused and then taper to Antake. So I'll still be focused the next two weeks after that. But my volume is lower, so I'm not going to, won't be riding like quite as much or quite as hard. And then hopefully be rested for Antake. And then after that, I'm going to kind of like chill out for a little bit with training. So Chill out. Well. Yeah, it's been good. You know what else is good and nice? <laughs> Wakayama. Yeah, there's not really a smooth transition for this one, but we have a fun listener email update from Cece. Yeah. So she emailed us, I guess, like, at least a month ago. Time flies. I don't know how long ago it was. But if you were listening a while back, she had emailed and said that she was thinking about coming to Wakayama and doing kind of a farm stay. And update, she's here. <laughs> and yeah, she, she made it. And she sent us a nice email. Do you want to read it? Yeah. 
So CC said, I just want to let you know that I am in Wakayama Prefecture in the town called Ryujin, having the time of my life. It's pretty incredible here. Lots of chatting with old people and working on different farming activities and just experiencing chill country life. Frogs croaking, crows calling, sometimes misty mountains, sometimes blue sky. We even enacted the Three Billy Goats gruff story with the goats for the local preschool and got in the Tanabe newspaper. Some sightseeing, but mostly working on the farm and hanging out at the main house called Ryunohara. I've been staying in one of the guest houses that's designated for volunteers and is pretty huge, on a hill, and very mellow. I have my international driver's license, so I've been driving the K-truck around with tons of rice hull or plants or goats in the back. <laughs> sounds like the dream. Also, yeah, it sounds pretty like idyllic. Fun fact that CC probably knows, but in case you don't know, a uh, listener, Ryujin means uh, dragon god, which is a pretty yeah. cool town name. And then Ryunohara is like dragon field. Yeah, and Tanabe is actually the town that we camped in when we were in Wakayama. And we've actually ridden through part of Ryujin. Yeah, I guess we turned, we were on a bike route that like turned away before we went to this downtown. I don't know if there's really a downtown, but <laughs> before we went to like there the kind center of There's a of little that. one. Because actually that trip when we went to Wakayama, that was my top pick was the Ryujin um, campsite. But unfortunately, mm. it was seasonal and it was closed. So that's why we ended up at Tanabe Kawayu Campground. Which was also a nice campground. But yeah, I really I'd like, like to Tanabe go, also. I'd like to go back because, especially based on CC's descriptions, but also just like the portion of the road that we were on, it was really scenic back there. Yeah, it's really and pretty. There were even some um, onsen, you remember? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I hope, or yeah, I'm, not, I hope you're having a good time. It sounds like you're having a great time. I'm, yeah, it sounds I'm really glad. fun. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know. And what have we been up to <laughs> well, so far this month? It feels like, I mean, not a whole lot, but I guess we have been doing some stuff. It has been nice that because it's Golden Week, I'm getting, I have a three-day weekend, so that's why we're recording, like we had a nice day today. And then next weekend, I have a four-day weekend, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, because Golden Week is, we've talked about it before, but it's like, three or four Japanese holidays in one week long span. And so people can a lot of times take the days off in between and make it a whole like built in spring break. So it's a pretty wild time. If you're trying to travel in Japan, we yeah. purposefully aren't going anywhere. Even today we went into Kanazawa and we tried and to crazy. go to a coffee shop to see our friend. And it, there was a line out the door, which we were happy to see because we like that he's getting business, but we were kind of like, hey, like, I can also imagine busy. that he was probably like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, like, we it's were... 9 a.m., we just opened, and there's already a line out the door. Yeah, it's probably very tiring, but also, like, I'm happy that, you know, he's getting good business. But we were kind of like, looks looks like you're busy. We'll come back later. <laughs> so we ended up going to Mr. Donuts instead. Yeah, very. Uh... Oh, Mr. Donut. <laughs> I think he's just a singular donut. Yeah, he's true. just Mr. Donut. I always call him Mr. Donuts. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we went to Mr. Donut so which was also really nice. And it was yeah. fun because we got to see how crowded the city was, mm -hmm. which it was. There was a lot going on. There was also, at one point, so Zeb has this kind of thing where he likes to sit. Anywhere we go, he likes to sit facing the door. Do you do that on purpose or just, is that what you, anyway, you, I don't know if you've noticed, but you like to sit facing the door. So I was looking out the window and I saw a bunch of um, people walk by with like, trekking poles and we're behind downtown me? i guess like behind your side oh, where okay. like you would have had to turn around to look and they kept distracting me because there were so many people crossing the streets yeah it's really funny that the elderly people they bust out the like hike like the so urban hiking gear i figured out why they were all in urban hiking gear because <laughs> there was this event that was happening to kind of kick off golden week in kanazawa and it was a walking event which is a really cool idea instead of a 5k which i guess not everybody's into running but everybody can walk and there was a ton of little kids and older people and they were all participating in this event that was i think it was a 3k 5k 9k or 12k course all around downtown and it started which in this kind of park area that happened to be across from the mr donut mm. and you would get your course and you would get your like this necklace with a qr code yeah everyone had this like massive yeah, it like was tour like group when you go to thing. a music festival and you get the like 
tag in the plastic sleeve, you yeah, know? Yeah, I guess. I it was like that it. kind of name tag thing. Hmm. Um, I don't know what happens with that. I guess when you go to the different checkpoints, they scan it. But they all had these maps, and they were going to like the different checkpoints based on their courses. And I don't know, it just it was a really fun atmosphere because everybody had these like matching towels, and there was like parents with their little kids, but also like grandparents that were just like, I'm out here for a fun hiking day and yeah with the bear was, bells and they had the hats on <laughs> yeah. and their backpacks and their looked hiking like they boots. were about to go hike the appalachian trail and all yeah, they, they were looked doing like is... they, were, they were really heading out into the wilderness <laughs> but they were in downtown kanazawa and it was cute hip shopping district it was cute until there was one point i was trying to ride past a group of the people oh, yeah and they had their hiking poles, but they were so splayed out that they were taking up the whole <laughs> sidewalk and they were just going. So, uh, I, you know, it's fine. I wasn't in a hurry. So I just rode behind them for a while. Yeah. But there was a point where I was like, okay, can you please? Yeah, sometimes like, like the elderly walk hikers are a bit like aloof on the sidewalks, but they're out there. They're getting after it. But anyway, that's what was going on in downtown today. Yeah, um, so that was our show. I think today's show a day is yeah, the official holiday i guess so i don't even know that people really care what holiday it is it's just like golden week and that's what they were saying over the speakers they were like welcome to the start of golden week <laughs> yeah it probably matters more for like children's day true which it's that's probably not an actual until kind of big may 5th so right now it's april 29th may cinco de mayo yeah i thought that would also be cinco de mayo <laughs> but we haven't really been that was kind of like a fun day and we did get to go into town on friday evening which is kind of the official official start of golden week because i have my new evening school work schedule yeah. that i work on fridays so we got to go get some pizza yeah which, was which i guess that's the start of the weekend like i guess that night oh, so that's the start of golden week i guess so. because my coworkers were telling me like have like have a great golden week we'll yeah. see you next week and they were all telling me have a good golden week that's true but it was funny because when we went out to eat dinner we had made a reservation because it was a friday night and you you just never know japan really likes reservations so we try to make them as much as possible <laughs> and it's a good yeah. thing we did because we showed up and it was packed at this like i mean it, it wasn't it's a good pizza place but it's nothing like exceptional and so I didn't really think it was going to be that crowded. And we go, we show up and it's like slammed and it's all people in business suits. And so it's yeah. like fairly obviously a business like party, like a, one of the Nomi Hodai drinking parties yeah. on the first floor. And we kind of, we wait until exactly 630 or whatever, because uh, <laughs> we're trying to be like good and on time. And we go in and we're like, oh, we have a reservation for 630. And they look a little bit flustered and they kind of like talk to each other in the back for a second yeah <laughs> and then they come over to us and they're like um it'll just be a second we're getting your table ready and we're like yeah no problem and then a couple minutes later they're like okay your table's ready and they take us upstairs and there's even more people upstairs in business suits so i guess either it's two work parties or they were just had the entire place and they they totally forgot about our reservation because yeah we just ended up in a little <laughs> hallway yeah them getting much. their getting our table ready was them putting like the smallest table they could find in the hallway so we could like sit down which really just cracked me up i was i'm not like upset about it or anything but they were so like panicked and then the like people in the work party thought it was so funny because i think it was obvious to them too that they were kind of like uh sit here <laughs> yeah because the work party there was like a table of women and they kept like you know when people have been drinking and they're trying to be subtle and they're not subtle at all, but because they're kind of drunk, they, like, think they're being subtle. Yeah. And this they is, like, kept... 7.30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they were having a good time. They are having their, like, no me hodai, all you can drink party. But they kept, like, looking over at me <laughs> and, like, I don't know. But it was, um, it was a good dinner. Very fun. I, fun atmosphere that everyone was having such a fun time to kick off their Friday night yeah. of a week-long holiday. Yeah, and I've been wanting to have pizza, so that was my major motivator yeah <laughs> zeb's very pizza motivated but we did do a we had a kite making party um was that yesterday it was sunday yep yesterday morning yeah which is not a golden week activity or anything it's in not, particular but it's, it's not a golden a... week activity but next month which is may is usually when our town uchinata has a kite festival yeah and... but that old man after he got <laughs> slammed they had to cancel it so now they're never having it again. That is not. Due to the casualty. That is not that true. <laughs> you can't 
can't spread rumors that some man died at the kite festival. Why did it get canceled? <laughs> so last year we went to this kite festival with our friend Kyle who was visiting. And there was, you know, the kite making group is... We mostly, talked about this last episode. It's mostly old men. Episode. It's like yeah. pretty elderly men. And they were flying this huge kite, which was really impressive. It's like, I don't know, taller than two people stacked up on top of each other. It's a big kite. And it took the entire kite club to kind of like hoist it up off the ground and like get it to catch the wind. And the second it caught some wind. Well, the thing is when it catches the wind or once it starts going up, you got to let go. Because it's a big kite. And some people didn't let go. Yeah. And this man got slammed onto the ground and it was hard to watch. And it was like. Last episode when I talked about this, you told me that I needed to stop bringing it up. You brought it up again. (laughs) Wait, now you're the one that's like really I gotta, reliving the moment. I gotta you're over add there really. Some context for the viewers. Anyway, mm-hmm. I think he's fine. Zeb is spreading some rumors that that's why the kite festival is canceled, and that's not true. <laughs> so instead of the kite festival, there was a little cultural exchange where it was just probably six of us, and we made kites. And it was, it was a really cool experience because I've never made a kite before. But the local kite club helped instruct, we drew on paper. I drew a dragon. Zeb drew some very impressive Pokemon, some Pikachu. Um, I had a stencil. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that part, but yeah. And then we glued bamboo onto the back. No, like, it was Sugi. Oh, was it? Mm-hmm. Oh, and then so some thin strips of wood and tied a string and we got kites now. And I, thankfully, I didn't have to do any of this. Because <laughs> yeah. some handsy old man <laughs> did it all for me. <laughs> you can't me, describe so. them as that. They were yeah. very eager to help, but their helping was just kind of like, here's how you do it. And then they would come over and they were like, and it's done. <laughs> yeah, it was basically, here's the full, fast description in Japanese. Here's what you're supposed to do. Uh, you don't know how to do it. I'm, I did it for you. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they were very nice. They were excited to show us about kites, which they're passionate about. And yeah, now we have some kites that we're going to fly. And I didn't know that prior to the 1700s, the kites were mostly flown for like Buddhist religious ceremonial practices, Hmm. like symbolic offering of thanks. And then from the 1700s onwards, kites started to be developed for like social use. So there's specific kite styles and imagery for each region of Japan. Now, fast forward to 2024, there's all kinds of kite clubs you can be part of. But yeah. We, we made you some kites. You used to be able to go to the World Peaceful Kite Festival, but that... Well, and speaking of kites, I went to a shop last week with koinobori flags, which are those koi fish, like the giant koi fish flags. Mm, for and children's day. Yeah. I went because I was with some people that wanted to buy uh, carp flags to represent children. And yeah, they were traditionally flown as part of Japan Boys Day with one carp for each son. And then Girls' Day is Hinamatsuri. Hmm. But then that became kind of like not okay to just have Boys' Day. So 1948, they became Children's Day. And families are now, there's still Girls' Day, but Boys' Day is now Children's Day. And well, that seems <laughs> not fair. I know. The feminist in me is like, yeah, well, we'll celebrate Girls twice. But then also the like realist in me is like, well, it seems day? a bit redundant. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't need a day. We could yeah, just have dude. Children's Day, but then like... Well, so Axe Girls Day. <laughs> I know. What's going on here? It's redundant, but girls are fun, so we'll celebrate twice. But anyway, now after 1948, you just can fly koi flags for either child you have. It's interesting because I didn't know that you flew a flag per child. I thought it was just like representative of, here's this day, we're going to fly flags. Yeah. I didn't know that um, each flag represents one child. Yeah, so you have like a little family out on your flagpole. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Well, and apparently the carp... I didn't know that a carp swam upstream to become a dragon yeah. in Chinese legend. So that's why they picked that, because it symbolizes strength and success. And you want that for your children. That's why there's a Pokemon called Magikarp. Oh. And it turns into Gyarados. It's a dragon. Fun fact. There you go. But yeah, the shop that was also that was selling these koi flags was also selling these samurai armor displays Hmm. which were way more expensive than i realized like a thousand dollars for a huge i mean it was all in yen but the equivalent of a thousand dollars for like a 
big thing of armor that you can't wear. It's like... Well, yeah, it's a super cool decoration. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it's apparently an investment. People that, pay $1,000 for art all the time. Well, true, I, I guess. I want a samurai suit in my house. But you can only put it up for Boys' Day, which is now Children's Day. No, nah, I just leave it up all the time. Well, yeah, I guess you could. If you pay that much money, you can do whatever yeah. you want. But, yeah, the the military helmet with, called the Kabuto and then the armor called the Yoroi, that's... You put that out so your son also looks very fierce, strong, and powerful. So that was yeah, an my interesting... son can beat your son up. <laughs> I was like, wow, this I don't think I can afford anything in the shop, and also it's very niche. But how much were the carp flags? They were forty eight hundred yen, maybe like four thousand yen, which is like thirty dollars. That's not bad. No, That's for just cool. the flag, but then you could get the whole display for like two hundred fifty dollars. But it was just a very, it was like a thing that I have never wanted, but I could see how if I grew up in a neighborhood that like everybody's got their koi flags out, you kind of like need to be part of the neighborhood thing. Otherwise it looks like you don't like your kid. Well, you got to show off. <laughs> You're doing your part for the yeah. future of the country. Yeah. Look how many koi I've got swimming in my pond. Well. It's a big deal. Aside from that little flag shop that I visited, this is somewhat unrelated other than the fact that I... I did it last week, but I ate two new things last week that <laughs> I'm going to tell you about. The first thing, um, while I was on the same trip where we went to the Koi Flag, I ate wisteria-flavored ice cream. And you know how much I like ice cream. And I've never had wisteria-flavored ice cream before. And this was being sold at the Ashikaga Flower Park, which is this huge deal park that's in Tochigi Prefecture with tons and tons of flowers and i talked about it before because they did the illumination there yeah well it's the same park but of course in the winter there's no flowers so they just have lights yeah a bunch of leds which is very clever and like you know a creative way to keep people coming to the park but the wisteria that was already blooming in like mid-april was very impressive smelled great and then the ice cream was kind of like a vanilla like perfume potpourri flavor Mm. (laughs) <laughs> it was a it little bit delightful. like floral. I mean, it is wisteria, but I don't know if it was my favorite. That's like when people have like lavender candy. It was kind of like lavender. Yeah. Mm. It's like I could get the appeal. It wasn't my favorite flavor, but I liked the novelty of it. For me, the appeal would just be the color. It I don't was, need the flavor. It was a really pretty color. Yeah. Like a light purple. Yeah. But they had the great wisteria tree. It had just started blooming and it's only blooming for about a month and it's 160 years old and the branches span 600 tatami mats, which if you're familiar with <laughs> Japanese measurements, that's a common way to measure rooms is by how many tatami mats is it. And if you're not familiar with how big a tatami mat is, 600 tatami mats is about a thousand square meters, which is pretty big. It's pretty big. And it's up there on this netting. And so you're walking under these supported branches with the wisteria yeah, because they like can train it kind of like grapes, like a grapevine. Yeah, they, they can... it was like that. And when they moved it into this flower park, they have all these pictures of it like being like loaded up by a crane where they have to keep all the netting together. It just looked like this whole massive thing to to get the great wisteria tree over. And one of the park rules, you can visit Ashikaga Flower Park to see this tree and to eat wisteria ice cream, but you cannot enter with a wedding dress on. Makes sense. I don't know, like, what happened that they needed to write that literally into the rule Well, they probably just get annoyed by people doing photo shoots. Maybe. Like, they probably have so many brides coming there to do, you know, photo shoots, and then you're messing up the vibe, and you got guests just trying to hang out and enjoy their day. I mean, I guess. photo shoot people. I just can't imagine. There were just so many people there, and people were just, like, generally taking photos. I can't imagine that, like, you wearing a wedding dress is going to be that much more, like distracting than just regular. No, it's not distracting, but you're going to be like taking up space and like standing in front of stuff, doing all the poses. I could see it being annoying. I guess so. Because we do that even in Kenroku and sometimes when people are like hogging a bridge to do a photo shoot and you have to awkwardly like stand there and wait and kind of shuffle Mm. around or, you know, you awkwardly have to like walk around them or do the like, excuse me, like I'm... I guess. It just never really bothers me that much because it's like, oh, look, their wedding. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like a once in a lifetime thing. Keep that at home. (laughs) Keep that in your backyard. <laughs> well, you can't do it at Ashikaga Flower Park. So, the other interesting, to me, food that I ate last week 
<laughs> is kashiwa mochi, which is a kind of mochi. Lots of things in Japan are mochi, but it's wrapped in an oak leaf. That's a fact. <laughs> I would say most well, wagashi might... in Japan are <laughs> yeah. well, mochi. I mentioned that because you're like, mochi, what's the big deal? But it's wrapped in an oak leaf, which I had never seen before because it's specifically around Children's Day. So back to the like seasonal thing that's going on right now because Japan loves seasons. But okay, when the first thing so my friend got it for me and he has been living in Tokyo for 30 years and he was like, I haven't had this since I was young and I saw it in the 7-Eleven <laughs> and he was like, my wife would be shocked that I bought this at a 7-Eleven, but I had to get it because it reminded me of being younger and the smell is so like distinct. It smells like a forest floor, but like in a delicious way, like in a appealing way. And I don't know how to s- describe that because the forest floor maybe sounds like mucky and gross. Well, I think a forest, like a nice forest scent yeah. and a forest floor, like a nice loamy scent. Yeah. Is, I appreciate it, but I don't think it smells delicious. Really? It when smells I smell like... it, I don't want to eat it. I smell it and I'm like, oh man, that smells really, really nice. I smell it and I just want to like lay down in it, you know? Just like, eat the dirt? No, just like be surrounded by it and it's like fresh and like... I mean, yeah, but that's the difference for me from wanting like inspiring appetite and wanting to eat versus cozy and nice well it was like fresh and leafy and like just different than any dessert i had smelled before so you're not supposed to eat the leaf but of course you like can smell the earthiness and then the inside is a sweet bean paste i mean of course (laughs) this is a pretty traditional wagashi but kashiwa means oak leaf and since oak don't shed their old leaves until the new leaves grow, I didn't know this, but I read this online, uh, Japanese people consider oak trees like a symbol of prosperity for one's descendants. So that's why that became popular for Children's Day. Thank goodness. Yeah. You know, I went to the family mart and I had a cinnamon apple raisin swirl pastry. Yeah. It was new. It was 30 yen off. It's pretty good. <laughs> so those are the things we ate this week <laughs> mine wasn't a symbol of anything it was just just delicious it was just tasty so i mentioned earlier that i had gotten my new friday schedule and i know that this was we talked about in the 100 episode we thought maybe one day this would be a resource for fellow jet people and i can see maybe why it's not because we never <laughs> <laughs> talk about the jet program or work we do but not really like a lot Um, So I was just going to briefly touch on that it is finally the new school year and we've been in classes for I guess three weeks now, almost four weeks, which is why it's interesting that we're going straight into Golden Week. So we have another big break. Um, But there's some things I forgot about the start of the new school year. One, I I didn't really think about the fact that so many teachers left, so a lot of new teachers came. Um, and I also forgot that they shuffle around within the teacher's room. I don't know the significance of it or why, like but they often, move desks? yeah, a teacher won't like, even if they stay in the school, they won't stay in the same desk. They'll move one desk over, hmm. or maybe they'll move to the desk across from where they used to sit. This seems like annoying. Like don't get too comfortable yeah. around here. And sometimes they get moved to the other teacher's rooms. Hmm. Because I think there are three teachers' rooms. I sit in the main one, oh. and sometimes I won't see teachers, and it's because they got moved to one of the, <laughs> to the side lesser rooms. rooms. I'm yeah. sure they're not like that, but but so I forgot that I would have new kind of neighbors sitting around me. Hmm. Um, so that's been interesting that I have some new people sitting near me. Yeah, it's like an um, open desk situation, like open office. I mean, yeah, it's terrible. I really don't <laughs> like it. Um, sometimes you text me, and you're like. Oh, uh, I can't concentrate. Well, I think sometimes there's some different cultural things about like eating with your mouth full or eating, talking with your mouth full. Mm. Um, and then also some just, I have the problem where if I hear eating noises, it kind of drives me nuts. And a lot of my uh, people that kind of sit in my area are very loud eaters. Mm. They're very... Well, open eating, mouthed eating like eating um, loudly is kind of like polite in japan mm-hmm. it's not always but like slurping noodles for example is like good and in america you're like don't slurp noodles it's rude yeah like the scene from tampopo yeah <laughs> where they're trying to learn how to eat spaghetti that's kind of how i feel um but yeah so i have some new neighbors and one of the more interesting new neighbors 
is I talked about her before. She was the English teacher that replaced the geography teacher that left in the middle of the year because he realized the school he was at was maybe not up to his par. So he just didn't come back after summer oh. break. And so they called in an English teacher to replace him. Well, she left at the end of this last school year because she was only supposed to be there until December. And then she was there for like three more months. And then she finally left and we said goodbye and kind of she gave me a little treat and we had like our little <laughs> moment about like, okay, like, see you, like, good luck. And then I was sitting there like last week and she walked in and She's back. we kind of made eye contact and she <laughs> kind of started laughing a little bit. But she sits next to me again. It's probably like um, when you left Chuo and you said like goodbye to everyone and you had yeah. your whole ceremony and then like you're back. <laughs> yeah, except I don't... You have to be like, hello again, it's me. Sorry yeah. for the sorry for the goodbye ceremony. That was unnecessary. Yeah, except she's not a teacher. She's now like a nurse. Oh, she's a woman of many talents. Yeah, so sometimes she's in the nursing room, but they gave her a desk in the teacher's room in case she needs a change of scenery i don't i don't really hmm. understand what's happening um but she's it back. seems very confusing the like way that the board of education kind of organizes teachers but maybe it's like keeps it fresh you know nobody gets like stagnant yeah i don't know i don't i'm not sure how it all works but with some of the more interesting notes i'd also forgot about this that new students they go through these super rigorous health checks mm. so they've been doing all kind of like scans and getting like their electrocardiograms and doing all these kind of weight things and blood tests and all these medical checks, um, which I, I don't really know why, but I guess because they're doing athletics and stuff. I don't really, it's been I really mean, intense. In like just the town, you get an annual health check too that like, well, you don't have to. Yeah, that's true. You don't have to. But, like, in America, nobody was giving out, like, town health checks the way that it seems to yeah, be. Yeah, and at school, you would only do... You would go get a physical if you are going to play a sport. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't get, like, an electrocardiogram. Yeah, just for being a student. Um, maybe, maybe it's a benefit it's good, though. of going to school. Maybe you, you find out... Some health care. Yeah. You find out things that you didn't know were wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's just what a hypochondriac like me needs. Yeah. And then I also have a new supervisor who is from a technical high school. And from initially talking to her, it sounded like her students are a little bit more motivated hmm. than our students. Um, it's okay. But yeah, so that's interesting. So I have a new supervisor, a new person that I work with. Um, a whole new year. Yeah. But so, yeah, it's been really like an interesting start to the year. But, yeah, not bad. You like it so far? I think it's <laughs> that was such a long pause. Yeah, sorry. I think it's about the same. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just a unique. You I think know. you're just not like a passionate teacher. And well, my students are also not passionate well, students. No, they're very <laughs> so. good. They're very good people. They're just not excited about school. Yeah, except for the kids that got kicked out for committing crimes. Yeah. Which one of them got kicked out for committing a crime? I don't know what his crime was. Um, but then I was at my night school and now I know that's where those students go because oh. he came up to me in the hallway. <laughs> he was like, he was like, you're the teacher from Uchinata. <laughs> I oh, said, yep. They're just trying to figure and out And then he said, way. do you remember me? <laughs> I said, yep. Yeah. Well, they're just high schoolers. But just trying to live. Yeah. Hopefully it's a better school year for everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, do you have a word of the week? I do. So this is related to what we were talking about earlier. My word is yoyaku. Yoyaku. Which? Is, I don't know. Something reservation. About children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's, yeah. I'm because um, lost. It, we've talked about reservations before, so you've probably heard that word before. Um, and we've talked about reservations in past episodes and why they're important. But this is just a reminder, if you're listening to this bit, that... If you come to Japan as much as you can, if you're passionate about a certain type of food or a certain restaurant, you should try and um, reserve it as far in advance. Usually places do like a one month in advance and it's super worth it because people really like reservations and places get crowded really fast. So if you really want to eat somewhere, yeah, make a reservation. And most of the time you can do it online. So if you use Google Translate, it's not 
difficult. Um, so it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Maybe this will help me remember it <laughs> in the future, but I was looking at the two kanji that make up yo yaku, and yo means I or me, like that that kanji, and then yaku can mean like it's in the word promise, but it's also about or approximately, so it's mm -hmm. like about me. <laughs> I promise I'll come. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there. Well, mine is dekoboko, and I picked it because of the kanji. They look really unique. and They do look really unique. You should look these up. They look like Tetris blocks. Yeah, well, I'm looking at them in the notes, and they look fake. I know. It kind of looks like wingdings or something yeah, when you do. use a font, but your computer doesn't have the font, so it just gives you random symbols. That's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, they, they look, don't look ridiculous. Real. Well, and that's why dekoboko means bumpy, because these mm -hmm. two Tetris block-looking kanji look one looks like a upside down t and the other looks like a u and yeah. so it's bumpy they look like tetris blocks yeah deco boco so here's the end of yeah. <laughs> episode 101 thanks for sticking with us yeah we hope you liked this episode and don't forget to tell everyone you know about our podcast yeah you can also leave us a review only nice people i only want nice people to listen to our podcast yeah i can't handle it if you're <laughs> Yeah, if you're too mean, we'll can't do it. Um, and you can send us an email if you have an issue with yeah. anything we said. Don't, but don't. But <laughs> it's ramblingramsbothams at gmail dot com. Yeah, just nice emails. We don't we don't look at mean emails. Well, anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for listening. Thanks. Bye. Bye.